Over the past year, the Alaska Volcano Observatory has picked up more than 3,500 earthquakes and smaller tremors around Mount Spur, a giant volcano covered in ice. On top of that, satellite images show that the ground is actually shifting, and when they fly over, they're spotting more and more of those nasty gases coming out, the kind that can cause acid rain and annoy birds. At least for a few days. Researchers say it's not really about if the volcano is going to blow, but when. No one can say exactly when it'll happen, but people in Anchorage are watching closely. But what really happens when an icy volcano loses its cool, with a major city just 80 miles away? Mount Spur is part of the Aleutian Arc, a volcanic chain stretching roughly 1,200 miles across southwestern Alaska. This region is part of the notorious Pacific Ring of Fire, known for its volcanoes and intimidating earthquakes. In fact, 90% of yearly earthquakes happen along this ring. Regardless, people are eager to visit these places. Volcano tourism is a real thing. It's controlled and safe, as long as you're careful when opening a canned soda you brought there. What sets Mount Spur apart from other volcanoes in the region is that it's one of the few large stratovolcanoes covered in thick ice and permafrost. This icy layer can lead to fierce eruptions that create steam and volcanic mud flows. It also has two major vents, the main summit, which hasn't erupted in over 5,000 years, and Crater Peak, the one that came to life in the 20th century, once in 1953 and three times in 1992. A stratovolcano is made up of many layers of hardened lava, ash, and rock from past eruptions. It can also erupt explosively because its thick magma traps gases, building up pressure that eventually leads to a sudden, dramatic explosion. Like a tightly sealed pressure cooker left on a stove where steam accumulates inside until the lid blows off. Mount Spur's magma traps gases until the pressure becomes too much. It leads to explosive outbursts instead of just oozing liquid rock. However, this kind of eruption can be more dangerous because its effects, like ash, clouds, and gas, can spread much farther than just around the volcano itself. When Crater Peak violently exploded in 1953, it sent a huge ash cloud soaring more than six miles into the sky, affecting Anchorage and nearby areas. Near the crater, Hot material mixed with snow, ice, and heavy rain created fast-moving mud flows, known as lahars. These lahars surged down the volcano slopes, flooding nearby valleys and clogging a local river with debris. This rerouted the river and affected the local ecosystem. Once you pop a pressurized fizzy drink bottle, you can cork it again without worrying it'll blow like the first time and ruining your ceiling. Even if you poured all the drink back in, it wouldn't make a difference. No matter how much you shake it, you can never generate the same amount of pressure. However, volcanoes don't work like that. Not all the magma escapes, and the underground plumbing system constantly shifts. New, hotter materials mix with what's left trapped, causing violent reactions. It's like throwing hot water on hot oil which might be the reason why four decades later in June 1992, Mount Spur's Crater Peak erupted again. The blast was powerful and sudden. A massive plume of volcanic dust broke the previous record and went nearly nine miles into the sky, forcing aviation warnings and grounding flights. The ash cloud drifted far, raining volcanic ash more than 160 miles away from the eruption. The volcano expelled around 1.55 billion cubic feet of ash. That's enough to cover a large city, or fill over 17,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. In Anchorage, residents had to stay indoors or wear masks to avoid inhaling it. Fortunately, no one was injured, thanks to the remote location and early warnings from observatory scientists. That wasn't the end of it. Not until the subsequent eruptions in August and September while disruptive, they were not as powerful as the previous two. 
But what about the current situation and potential risks? We're at a point where the ground near the volcano is shaking almost constantly. Toxic emissions are increasing daily, which means that the magma is moving. Satellites even spotted the ground bulging slightly, like something was pushing from underneath. All that's left is for nature to send one last warning, called a volcanic shudder. It's a prolonged rumbling earthquake that marks the final push of molten rock toward the surface. No one can predict the exact timing, but the ongoing activity has put scientists and monitoring systems on high alert. You know that the situation is critical when authorities are suggesting that tourists postpone their visits. While there's a small chance that the volcano might calm down, many in Anchorage are preparing for the worst-case scenario. So, what is the worst-case scenario? What happens next really depends on how much ash the volcano throws out. Based on the wind direction and strength, ash could blanket the town again just like before. If the eruption happens during the day, the ash might block out the sun for hours, turning midday into a sudden twilight. It could be mildly annoying, making citizens grab shovels again. Or it could cause complete devastation, endangering the people in Anchorage and affecting the entire region. Here's why the so-called volcanic ash isn't like the soft ash you get from burning wood or paper. Breathing it in, by accident, isn't just unpleasant, it can be harmful, especially for those with asthma or other respiratory issues. It's made up of tiny sharp particles of rock and glass, similar to fiberglass, that can irritate lungs and airways. It can also destroy machinery and cars. According to the US Geological Survey, very thick ash deposits, typically greater than 4 inches, can cause roof collapse. But these guidelines refer to volcanic ash in general. Glaciated volcanoes like Mount Spur can produce finer ash and more of it, especially if magma interacts with ice or water. This is called phreatomagmatic activity, and it can make ash plumes even more explosive and widespread, leading to an even more dangerous situation. The good news is that for Anchorage to be affected so heavily, it would take strong winds blowing in in just the right direction to carry the ash plume over the city. But regardless of the weather, one thing is almost certain. The nearby airspace will feel the impact. Volcanic ash can bring down planes. It's abrasive and heat-resistant, but melts inside jet engines, causing them to clog or fail mid-flight. It can remain in the atmosphere anywhere from a few days to several weeks. Because Anchorage sits beneath major flight paths connecting North America and Asia, an eruption here could disrupt international flights crossing the Pacific. It would potentially cause delays or cancellations across continents. The city is also home to one of the world's busiest cargo airports, serving as a crucial link for supplies and goods flowing in and out of Alaska. A shutdown could trigger widespread shortages which would affect everything from food and medical supplies to everyday essentials. While the entire world has been interested in Mount Spur these last couple of months, it isn't the only volcano showing signs of unrest. Across the globe, several others could start raining fire at any moment. Italy's Campi Flegri has been experiencing increased seismic activity near one of the most densely populated regions in Europe. The Yellowstone supervolcano, though quiet, has the potential for continent-wide devastation. In Mexico, Popocatépetl frequently spits ash into the skies near cities. Meanwhile, Cumbre Vieja in the Canary Islands has raised concerns over potential mega-tsunamis. And Mount St. Helens continues to show signs of reawakening. Each of these volcanoes could, under the right or wrong circumstances, send ripple effects across the world. Flights grounded, climate shifted, millions at risk. While Mount Spur is the volcano of the moment, it's part of a much larger, volatile network of fire beneath our feet. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.